Hi, my name is Dirk Vanderhorst. I'm a re-recording mixer, supervising sound editor. Worked on Hidden Figures, No Country for Old Men, 300, um, and many other films. I started um, as a production sound mixer after being an intern on a show called Hard Copy, which was kind of one of the first um, like magazine turned um, like inquire turned television uh, shows. So that was probably in 92. And then I went back to university after a couple of years doing that and uh, got a degree. I was finishing my degree in music and took a recording engineering class and kind of fell in love with that side of it. First project other than a couple little uh, short films was uh, I mixed Foley for a film called Between the Sheets with um, Dom DeLuise. I think he filmed it as well. He was the director. The biggest challenge for our jobs is really getting the job, I would say, and getting into the industry, um, making a name for yourself, kind of getting, um, making relationships, long-lasting relationships with uh, directors, producers, picture editors, things like that. that that's the most difficult thing is just making those relationships. I love everything about sound. Um, the cool thing about our job now is it's kind of morphing before it was a job where it was very specific. Like you would make bolts or you would make nuts or you would make this or you would make this. So our job was you would just be a Foley editor. You would just be a Foley mixer. You would just be a dialogue editor. You would just be an ADR editor. You would just be a mixer. You would just be effects, so on and on. And now with technology uh, becoming so affordable and so powerful, um, and with budgets kind of shrinking, um, we're able to take on more, do more, and be more creatively involved in the entire process, which has uh, been a huge benefit for those you know who embrace that yeah it's a really cool it's a really cool situation for us now the biggest change I've seen other than just technology since I've started um, 20 some years ago um, is that it was very the positions were very segmented you would be an editor or an assistant, or a supervisor, or a mixer, and the editor would bring drives to a mixer on a stage, and then your job was kind of done at that point, and the mixers would take over. Now, it's, especially as, like on the sound design side, a lot of sound designers are becoming mixers, and that mixer role has kind of gone away as far as this, like the sound effects mixer. We kind of lost the music mixer about 10 years ago as well, where the dialogue mixer started handling uh, the music as well. And now the sound designer, supervising sound editors, are now mixing more effects and dialogue, but you see it, it maybe even more in the effects chair. Um, so we get to take the, the process from the beginning to the very end now, which is, um, which is a big shift. The game changers both and this is kind of a negative, is that there's no mentorship. So we're kind of having to like, study on our own, learn on our own, ask a lot of questions of our, um, the people we respect and look up to, um, and try and learn as much as we can to become mixers and things like that, or even to become an editor. A lot of people are just kind of doing it now and missing the whole step of uh, the mentorship process. So in my business personally, I try and mentor at least one person a year and bring them up, get them in the union, teach them, and then hopefully continue working with them uh, for a long time. My business is, I have a studio, which you're looking at now, which is a small stage and I've geared this business, um, the business is Summit Post, um, I've geared my business to be able to handle smaller films, independent films, work with young directors, uh, up-and-coming directors, but also I've mixed um, 
you know, pre-dubbed some big movies in here and mixed some big movies in here, including Hidden Figures I pre-dubbed in here. Uh, I've just finished a film for Fox called The Empty Man, another film that's going to be coming out in the spring. Um, I just finished for Fox uh, called Breakthrough. Um, and I'm working on uh, Terminator 2 editorial here, not mixing it here. But I've mixed a lot of big projects in here, um, at least in some some part of the process, temp dubs, uh, pre-dubs, finals, uh, those kinds of things, depending on the budget. But the real key to my business is being able to take these small films, the independent films of young filmmakers, and help them get a great sound package for their film, even when they don't have a lot of money. My approach to sound, as far as the sound design is very minimal, generally. I like to find kind of the perfect sound for the moments, whether it be the perfect air or perfect background or perfect dog bark or perfect door or perfect, you know, cars or spaceship or whatever it is and be very minimal with it. It used to be where I thought more was better and since I've started mixing and designing and supervising, I've noticed that I'm coming back a lot on my sounds and being very specific and very intentional with each sound that I choose. Hidden Figures was definitely up there. No Country for Old Men, 300 was amazing. Um, I loved working on Wolverine, but I've, it's more favorite people that I've worked with, I think. Skip Leavesay, who's up for an Academy Award this year. Craig Hennigan, who's up for the same uh, award. Um, Millie and Eileen, who we were talking about, I've worked with them. They're amazing. Directors, Ted Melfi is incredible. Um, I worked with McGee a few years ago, who was probably the most fun, one of the most fun people I've ever worked with. Dave Talbert. Um, I've worked on a few movies with him. He's amazing to work with. And then there's picture editors, Troy Takaki. There's a, like a lot of picture editors I love working with as well. So my, a lot of my work just comes from the love of working with these people. I now work in Pro Tools um, pretty exclusively as far as a, a workstation because of the integration with the console uh, the S6 console, which I have, but also the integration with every other studio. They've kind of um, made their way into every studio in America. There's other great DAWs out there, uh, but in America, Pro Tools is kind of, uh, you know you can take your Pro Tools session and open it wherever you go. And every editor you hire also has Pro Tools. So it's that integration that's the most important thing. And Avid recently has kind of changed the way they work, and they're doing a lot of updating. They're really listening to their uh, clients, their professional clients, as well as their music, you know, the, all their clients. And they've, they've made huge improvements over the last few years. I am currently working on a film called 17 Blocks, which is a... Um, documentary that was shot over 20 years um, that will be premiering in a film festival I believe later this year um, and I'm working on Terminator and I will be starting Jingle Jangle with Dave Talbert who I mentioned uh, in the next month or two. Recently I just finished Hala uh, for a young film uh, director uh, Min Hal Beige and so that will be premiering at Sundance this weekend. We have kind of the same background as far as where we're from, and so I had a real connection with the story and with Min Hall, and it's, uh, you know, it's the teenage coming of age story, and it's a be told beautifully through, um, through this film, and it's very exciting to see it do so well. Technically, what's challenging in our business, or the most challenging, at least for me, is uh, well, we have a couple things going on. We have uh, production sound mixers who haven't been mentored and gone through that. So we're getting some production sound that um, is getting tougher and tougher to work with. There's still amazing people out there and it's always a pleasure. And the film that I'll show in a minute, El Camino Christmas, is one of the best 
recorded films I've ever worked on as far as the production sound. Uh, the other thing that's difficult is on a big film, especially a visual effects film, is the constant picture changes that come. The visual effects updates and then just moving picture, taking out picture, taking out frames. Uh, it also is difficult with comedies because they like to try maybe the same joke told t 10 different ways. And then they'll preview them for audiences and then change them back. So a lot of our job is just chasing changes. And all the way up to the end, and we've actually come back after we've finished movies, after they've been released, and do more changes. To start in the industry, first step is making contacts. And then finding somebody who will mentor you and take you on, whether it's uh, at a big studio or a company like mine. It's uh, one of those where you want to come in with a little money saved up because you'll be working probably for three, or not even working, but you know, intern, doing your internship for a few months for free generally. And then even after that, you'll get paid a little bit, but you need to build up hours to even get in the union, so you might have to work 150 days or whatever the number is now just to get in the union and start making that pay. But the toughest part is really just making those relationships, uh, being very open, uh, work ethic, and it's, it's, uh, it's tough, but it's not impossible. I always say, give yourself six months when you move out here. Technically, especially with young people, this is easy. So the skill, best skill set is personality. Like how you work, uh, your work ethic, how you get along with people. I choose people on, because since I do have a small company, my, unlike working for a large studio, you're going to interface with the directors and the picture editors and the producers and post supervisors. So when I meet people, it's 90% personality. So uh, what we're going to look at today is El Camino Christmas. It's a film uh, that Dave Talbert directed and Ted Melfi uh, wrote and produced. And we did this for Netflix uh, last year. First in the process is I'm going to set up my session. And what we have to think about in mixing a film is we're going to take hundreds of tracks, the dialogue, music, effects, backgrounds, foley, and get them all down to this highlighted track here, which is in this case a 7.1. So it takes up eight discrete speakers in the end. So you'll take hundreds of tracks and then mix it down to left, center, right, your surrounds and your subwoofer. A lot like music. You have all your instruments and eventually it has to get to a stereo. So you'll have your drums, your um, all your percussion, all your other instrumentation, strings, whatever it is, and you want to get it down to two tracks. In this case, we'll get it down to a 7-1, and then we'll make different versions from that. So this is my 7-1 print master here. And then following that, I have all my reverbs and effects set up on all these sends here. Um, then what we get from the picture department from production is all these tracks you see here is all the dialogue. And these are all, each one is a different microphone being used for that scene. So if we look at, you know, some of the bigger scenes here, you'll see that there might be 10, 12 microphones. So our first job on the dialogue side is to go through each one of these microphones and see which one or two or whatever it is sounds the best. And then we'll take those, these microphones, and you see there's more here, and we'll ch choose whatever is going to sound the best, and then we'll get them down into our tracks that we're going to be mixing, and then we'll start working on them. So you can see a lot of times there might be one track. Um, sometimes there might be two where I'll use a boom to get the natural ambience, but I like, still like the close-up sound of the lav mic. Um, the next tricky part is if the boom is far away from the lob, you're going to have phasing, like in any recording. So we'll take, we'll have to make sure that we sample a line each microphone. 
so we don't get that phasing quality. And there is new software that just came out that I just purchased today, so I'm going to take a look at that and see if it works, because uh, that would help our job a lot. But most of the times, I'll just be using one microphone here. So right there, he's coming through us. Sorry, that was a bad, bad place to choose, but that was coming through a radio. Um, so how about the Jack seven and give me that last wild turkey you have. So I'll just use Tim's mic for that. Um, I'll have, and then how about the Jack seven and give me that last wild turkey you have and, and uh, give me a half dozen of your daily scratches. All right. So looking at, uh, production dialogue, and these are the tracks that I've chosen here. So we're going to hear, uh, what they recorded on the set and if you listen here, there's nothing. So they didn't have the microphone running. Uh, shit. And then we've got some dialogue there. How about the jack? So there's no car. So we're going to have to introduce all the backgrounds. We're going to have to introduce the car. The car is breaking down here. You can see a little, I don't know if you can see it on your camera, but there's um, a little smoke coming off the wheels here. So we're going to have to make sounds for that or record sounds for that. Um, and then next thing we'll do is take a look at some of the music. So when the music comes in, and this is usually the end process, so I'll just skip ahead. They, they'll send the music split out by um, instrumentation. So I might have some percussion here. And then I'll have a little guitar. And, and so we'll have 30, 40, 50 tracks. Uh, these are, some of them are five ones, some are stereos of music. And so we'll mix all of that together uh, with the final sounds. Then my next job is to send out to Foley. And everyone's kind of familiar with Foley, right? It's where you'll send it to people who will actually recreate things that are happening normally with humans, like uh, my hand went down, so we'll have to record that. I'm walking, we'll have to record that. My shirt makes, oops, sorry about the mic. My shirt makes a movement, well, we're going to have to record that. Uh, my hand's here, I'm grabbing, like, even the keyboard. So we'll get the, we'll get the footsteps here. And you can hear there's a little reverb on them. And then props. Let's go to a scene with some props here. Uh, so little glass. Let's go. I'll find a better scene here. So here he's, he's going to grab some alcohol off the shelf. So we'll record, we'll have the Foley artist record that. He sets it down, he grabs it. So all those sounds are put back into the movie. Um, one people probably won't think of is when you take out, when these movies will go to foreign language countries, so they'll replace all the dialogue with their own actors. So one thing that happens is we have to put in cloth movement for all their moving. So the cloth movement, so for him running here, we want to hear his clothes. So you hear that. So they'll do an entire pass of just cloth. And this is used both in ADR. When we shoot ADR and replace voice, we want to hear that kind of shushing noise but it's also used for the foreign. So the next thing we're going to think about is we're going to need the hard effects. And hard effects are like the car, it'd be gunshots, uh, dogs barking, things that humans don't necessarily create. So we'll split these on tracks. And the whole thing about the way we work is we need to keep incredibly organized. So I'll put all my doors on one group. I'll put all my engines on a group. I'll put all my brake squeaks on a group. I'll put all my tires on a group. I'll put all my birds, airs, 
on and on and on, and we'll keep those in groups so that we can easily manipulate them while we're mixing. So that's him taking the keys out, or shifting and taking the key out there. Um, this group has just that brake squeak on it. This will be some tires. And then we'll add in. This is the engine failing here. And you'll see we'll do the perspective there. And then it coming closer. And the kind of glue that brings it all together, um, actually we'll play this too. So we see steam coming out. So it takes those 30 tracks or whatever to make up that car. Uh, just because we want it, it's cutting a car that's failing is actually pretty difficult. So you, you have to put it, you have to make the car sound like it's falling apart. And what makes everything seem real, and I'll just solo these for you, is the environment around it. So the car doesn't sound real until we put little birds in, and then we'll put some airs. In this case, some wind. And again, it's a perspective shift, so we want to capture that shift uh, to give it the dynamics. Then we'll, we've got more birds here. And then insects, because we're in the desert, so we'll have some insects. And whatever the scene calls for. And then switching to the interior of this is going to be more uh, light buzz. We're going to hear the refrigerator and more air tones, things like that, that you would hear inside of a small shop like this. And then when we put it all together, the jack the seven and give me that last wild turkey you have and, and uh, give me a half dozen of your daily scratcher now you find yourself a good lady you wouldn't need all this liquor there this is how it works i give you money you give me booze it's just simple capitalism why don't you grab a six pack on me no shit just trying to spread some cheer bro look at that it's a merry christmas after all Get it to work. Get out, get out. Set. Keep your head down, keep your head down. Ah, shit. Ah, damn, what'd you do that for? It's military. So this will be just production, and you'll see this way you can get a good sense of what we add to it. I can't get it to work. Get out, get out! Keep your head down, keep your head down. Ah! Yeah. Ah! Damn, what'd you do that for? It's military, asshole. You fire a gun at me, I fire back. I wasn't shooting at you! We got a fugitive right there! Oh. So when you add all the effects and the backgrounds and the music, right? And the feet. get it to work. All the holy. And that scene was shot slow motion, so they didn't shoot it with sound. 
So that's why there was no glass falling or any of that happening. Because when they shoot uh, those at 60 frames per second to slow it down, the sound doesn't come with it. And so we have to go back and add all that in. But we would add sound for all of this anyhow. So I have two Pro Tool systems here and two S6 systems. So one side I'll use generally for music um, and or effects, and the other side I'll use for dialogue and music or whatever. So I kind of split them out onto two systems, and then I have a separate recorder that records all my stems back in. And then I'll bring them into the session in the end like I have here. Or if it's a small project like this, I might record them just in my session that I'm working in. Okay, so for mixing, a lot of it is done now, um, especially the way I work in the editorial process. Levels, panning, maybe some reverbs, things like that. But when we get all the tracks together from all the other editors, if I have effects editors, Foley editors, things, you know, other people working for me, music comes in. Um, Pro Tools, I'll set up VCAs. And what a VCA is, it's a controller of a group. So one of the reasons we split everything out and categorize everything into kind of food groups is I can take one VCA track, which I can bring up on my console, just the VCAs, and I can be like, oh, the birds are too loud. So I can just pull one fader down, which will control all 16 tracks at a time and bring all those volumes down for all the birds. Um, and then we can spill those out, those VCAs out into faders and control them individually if we need to get more detailed in there. So, but for quick mixing, uh, VCAs is um, a good way to kind of handle your food groups and the level of your food groups. So if I have my dialogue, how I want it sounding, playing with each other, then I can just raise a VCA and it will keep that relative level and just bring everything up in that group and then bring everything back down in that group. So I'm not changing uh, whatever, like the car. Um, I wanted to keep all those sounds the same as far as volume wise, but maybe I want to bring it up or down in the mix with the music. So I can do all of that um, with one or two faders rather than having to grab 30 or 40 faders and pull everything down individually. These are my dialogue tracks here. And I kind of have them in, you know, when I edit, I have them at volumes that seem to play well. But when we start putting effects and backgrounds and music in, we'll have to raise or lower our dialogue to fit around all of that. And that's when these VCA tracks come in. And it's one track here that will control the volume of all of these. So if I look at it um, in terms of uh, groups, um, like food groups, I will just bring up just my VCAs on my console, which will be here. I have dialogue, group, music, effects, um, my a, B, C, D, E, Fs, etc., of effects and Bee Gees all coming up. And so I can really just mix from maybe 10 or 15 tracks rather than five or 600. So it's more efficient. And this was developed, I believe, by Neve, the whole idea of the VCAs. Pro Tools was coming out with their version of software based, which was, uh, I believe, eight tracks or 16 tracks. And then we would put a card in our computers back then, 7100s or whatever they were, the Apples. Um, they would also give us eight outputs from our sampler. And so I was, luckily in college, I learned Pro Tools, and it was Pro Tools 3. Um, so when studios were moving over to that, I was able to get work just because I was one of the few people who knew kind of how they worked. But also, all the other systems that were out there, the Waveframes or Synclavs or Dons, I had a passion for technology, so I was really into working with those too. And it was a different era back then where you would kind of go to work somewhere and they would tell you what you would be editing on. It could be film, it could be Waveframe, it could be Synclav, it could be Fairlight, it could be Dawn, it could be Pro Tools. You didn't really know what you were going to get yourself into. Um, so 
it's also nice that Pro Tools has become kind of the main workstation for us here too, because now we don't have to think about learning something every time we go into work, you know, every time we go somewhere new to work. Yeah, to mimic Fox, I put the same drivers that they were using. I'm not sure if they still are. And the 18 inch JBL subwoofers um, and the oversized horns. And there's two, two subs down here. Um, part of the idea, uh, a guy at DTS, Brian, um, I was having a little bass buildup in the back and he thought it would be a good idea if I got two subs, which kind of in a short room like this, um, it would help cancel out the uh, frequencies and less bass buildup in the back. And it worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm.